you know, when people really truly are they truly have a, a say in how the ski area is run. It's not, it's not token. Um, you know, some people don't want anything to do with it, but the people that do can go to meetings, and they do, and they voice their opinions, and um, very heartfelt. And, um, you know, when the big decisions come down the pike, you know, they show up for the meetings. I mean, you know, the typical co-op shareholder meeting, uh, or the typical t um, board of trustees meeting, which is ten times a year, um, you know, you'll get 30, 50 people at these meetings. And when we have the big shareholder meeting once a year in the beginning of April every year, you know, we have three, 400 people at that thing. You know, so we're getting a quarter of our people from all over the world descending. We do all from free skiing that day. Um, <laughs> that helps. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, yeah, I was, Plus I was draining the bar at the end of the season has kind of an appeal as well. <laughs> <laughs> So, so one other sort of, sort of thing related to that that I think it would be interesting to dig into a little bit is, and a little bit more specifics is kind of the like how democracy works at at Mad River, mm -hmm. then, you know, because like the key piece of the co-op model is that it's democratic, as you mentioned. Even if there are people who own more than one share; they only get one vote. Right. Um, so, in terms of like actual sort of on the ground decision making, um, you know, kind of how does member input happen? How like what? What decisions does the board of trustees? Sorts of decisions does the board of trustees feel comfortable making itself? Like what? What is it? What is? What sorts of decisions are like put mm -hmm. to the whole membership to vote on? Well, it's really evolved over time, and I think that's been one of the challenges of the co-op in the first few years of the co-op. I think we needed to find, you know, what worked for us, and you know, the co-ops were not designed to run ski areas. So we're like, as telling you earlier, it's like you know, we're kind of like the round peg in the square hole in a lot of ways. Um, that we're trying to f make this core map, this this co-op structure fit our purposes, and you know we're in, we're inventing a new way of running a ski area because this is you know in the first few years it was it was challenging, you know what was up to the board and what was up to management, and it really evolved over time, and after about five years or so, I think we really settled in on what works, and that the co-op board of trustees, there's a nine-member board of trustees that's elected by the shareholders. Um, Interestingly, of the nine, of nine seats on the board, six of them are reserved for in-state Vermonters and three of them are mm -hmm. reserved for out-of-state, which is direct opposite of the actual makeup of the co-op. Um, I'm not sure if this was by design or not, but I think when Betsy's mind, um, she wanted it that way because she wanted folks that were more local and more in touch with the mountain to have more of a say in, in what was going on because they were really, you know, touched by it more and more involved in it and knew what was going on. I think that's what the idea of it was. Um, so these nine member board of trustees hires the general manager, they're in charge of and the general manager reports to them to the board um, and that he's reviewed by the board. Uh, and the rest of the management team and the, all the employees uh, work for the um, uh, for the general manager. Mm -hmm. And I think in the early years there was a lot of you know shareholders making suggestions and complaints directly to employees and we had to really get past that and get people educated that you know we can't have our shareholders going up to the line cook uh, <laughs> and saying you know I don't like the size of the chocolate chip cookies this year you know and and that stuff happens and you know and, and still does happen um, but it is it's a democracy and it's messy sometimes um, but that messiness is really Okay, and you know, and it's all very well intentioned, and everyone's in it for the right reasons. But um, it, you know, the people, but but over the over time, the board has settled into uh, a mode where they're really s focusing on the long term uh, vision, long term um, commitment to the mission statement of the co-op was about the protection and preservation of the unique ski experience as well as the uh, environment on the mountain. Um, and looking you know, 30, 50 years down the line, which is very forward thinking. Um, and fortunately, we've been able to financially be successful enough that we've been able to put out a lot of the fires uh, that were in the first few years we were just like, putting fires out that we've been able to get to the point where we can be more forward thinking and look further down the line. Mm -hmm. um, and now we're to the point where you know, the board can do that kind of a thing, looking to the future. The management's working with, very closely with the board um, to make sure that we're going in, according to the, uh, to the mission and to the vision of you know, what, what we should be doing. Mm -hmm. um, and the co-op shareholders ha can go to meetings anytime they want. Uh, and they do, 
they can uh, we invite them to you know, talk to us via email or phone calls or whatever and trust me they have no trouble getting on the phone <laughs> to tell us what they think which is cool um, and they um, like I said they, they can get as involved as they want and you know the elections tend to be contested they're not slates of they're yeah. not slates of candidates that are thrown up there um, is there like because that was sort of the oh, question there's was there's right issues mind, i mean people sort you know, there were people that have lost elections mm -hmm. because they've been a, uh, you know been accused of being soft on snowboarding <laughs> um, you know it's it's pretty funny but it's uh, it people really are, take it seriously and um, it's it's so that, cool so I was curious if you could just maybe go in a little bit to sort of what that election process looks like because you know there's a pretty big variation between their their co-ops where maybe they'll put out just like a one paragraph blurb about each candidate and there's no statements oh, no. there are others where you oh, can we're very very different grandstand we, in front of the no no well, you have to you have to um, if you want to run you have to get um, a certain number of signatures uh, from co-op shareholders uh, there's a certain date that you have to by the first of February you have to declare your candidacy. Um, we have shareholder mm -hmm. forums where we have a candidate, candidate forums where shareholders have the opportunity to um, ask them their opinion and what their, what their thoughts are on things. We videotape them. Uh, mm -hmm. They're broadcast on our, on our website. Um, our meetings are also, we just started doing that where our meetings are, uh, people can uh, conference call into our meetings and listen in and actually now we're actually doing video so they can actually watch uh, what's going on. Um, and it's, yeah, I mean, and, and the election takes place at the meeting, mm -hmm. um, at the shareholders' meeting each year in So April. is it only people in attendance who no, can no, vote? No, no, no. Oh, oh, no, we send out a ballot. Or? They can mail them in. They, they, mm -hmm. they have to either be mailed in before a certain date uh, or, or at the meeting. Mm -hmm. And the elections are, you know, like I said, they're contested and they're taken seriously. And um, it's, it's a pretty interesting way to, to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and sort of in the, in the sort of kind of political history of the, of the co-op, does it is it tend to be sort of like what does the turnover look like in the board? Do people sort of stay for a few years and then leave? Do are there well, people there's who term there? limits. You can only have okay, two. There's the three year terms. Mm -hmm. um, there's two. There's two term limits. Um, every year, two in state and one out of state seats comes up. Mm -hmm. uh, if you know, obviously, sometimes there are people are re, you know running for a second term. Okay. Um, so potentially, there's three new board members every year, and usually, you know depends on the year but mostly um, you know you there's usually maybe two seats up that are actually up for election mm -hmm. uh, because some you know someone's up you know, someone's already in and uh, but like I said sometimes they're contested sometimes they're not uh, there's campaign buttons and everything <laughs> yeah and they have issues and um, what's cool and, and, and what's interesting too is when you have these you know different issues that are involved uh, and they've evolved over time um, What's really interesting about it is that um, there's no hidden agendas, and people are. It's you know, while people might have very differing views on what they what they'd like to focus on or what they'd like to be involved in. Without question, all of them have the best interest of Matter of Glenn at heart, mm -hmm. and which is it's it's remarkable. And you you think that there would be these kind of hidden crazy agendas, but there aren't. And it's and that's one of the things that's really gratifying is. You know, the, it is a very diverse group of people. Our shareholder base is very diverse. Mm -hmm. And I think we have this kind of hippity-dippity kind of, um, uh, um, uh, you know, it's what people think of when they think of Mad River in a lot of ways. But, you know, rest assured, we have a very diverse group of people. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how such wide, widely diverse groups of people can all come together for one common cause protecting and preserving this unique, special place. Mm -hmm. And it's, it never ceases to amaze me.